Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Pelioets. Uh, this year is going to be Leila Nishmat Shimshon Ben Avraham, who I didn't get the pleasure to meet um, in person, but I got the tremendous zechus to meet his son, uh, who's really a tzaddik. Uh, he really works tirelessly in his community to help build the shul. Um, and if anyone who is in Kirov or who is part of their community, uh, you know, that is very involved in the shul, you'll know this is not... This is really a difficult job. It is so difficult to uh, not only run the day-to-day, -day, but to make sure there are programs available in order to, to transfer over, you know, uh, Yiddishkeit to the next generation. Um, so this, you know, so I think some people just walk into the shul and they think, you know, everything magically happens and there's people behind the scenes. And so David is one of those people who is really behind the scenes, trying to keep it together for his community. Uh, and so we really applaud his efforts and we need to support people um, in whatever we can uh, to make sure that uh, they, they have the resources that they need to continue on. Because again, um, you know, the children are the guarantors of the Torah. They're the guarantors. If we don't successfully transfer that over to them, then all Yiddishkeit is lost, has for shalom. And all of the sacrifices that all of our ancestors before them have done, they're for naught. So you know, has for that should be the case. Uh, but we also want to send, uh, you know, prayers and brachat, uh, brachot over to his uh, ima, that Hashem should bless her nechama bet Yosef, that she should have uh, continued koyach uh, to live out the remaining days of her life, uh, to fulfill her mission here in, uh, in, in the world, um, and to really have uh, just nachas and simcha and joy during her, you know, time with her family and her her uh, her grandchildren, she'd be a wonderful zechus. Um, but today, of all things, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about adut unity, uh, which is something that again that it, we're, we're lacking so much in Klal Yisrael, and uh, we really need to get this lesson under our belt because uh, there's a great secret in here, and if we can get this under our belt, if we can finally understand this, there's, there's nothing that can stop us. You know, I have labored uh, the majority of my adult life under the impression that uh, that friendships are built on bridges of common ground. So even if you have somebody uh, who you don't totally, you know, you don't believe totally the way they do, it's it's always better to start with what you have in common and build the kavod from there. Once you build the respect, it's much easier at that point to weather through the storms. Uh, but if you just come both of you out right off the gate, just swinging battle axes, it doesn't accomplish anything. And it, it just, it's a very dangerous uh, uh, game. And uh, someone, not, I think all parties in my opinion, but someone always comes out to lose and, and there's nothing gained by that. It's always going to be somebody one-upping the other. So uh, let's see what Arav has to tell us today about this. And I pray, uh, you know, I say this in every shir, but always, you know, the, the rule is whatever you learn, you should take something out and see what you can do out of it. And this is the way we grow. So let's uh, do this. And uh, with uh, Shem's help, hopefully I'll be able to give it over properly. Uh, so let's see what the Rav has to say. So it states that unity is a tremendous pillar for the perfection of the world and the sustaining of all things. The spirit of the omnipresent is very pleased with it to the point that our sages commented in the verse of Yov 23.13, and he is in the one. It doesn't say he is one, but in the one. This teaches us that the divine presence does not dwell among the Jewish people except when they are unified. And we also spoke about this before as it relates to um, husbands and wives that if there's machloket in the house, the Shekinah will not reside there and there'll be no brachot in, in that house. There'll be no, there'll be no blessing there. Uh, so really, this is something everyone should be a student of our own, chasing peace and pursuing it. So it says, even a greater lesson than this, the sages noted in the verse of Hoshea 4.17, Ephraim is attached to idols, leave them be. That even when they serve idolatry, if they are united, the attribute of strict justice is not able to dominate them. And this is brought down from Tanghuma, uh, Sva 7. This is the reason that God did not bring destruction upon the generation of dispersion. Uh, and he's referring to the, the people of the Tower of Babel in this, in this uh, sentence here. And it says he did, uh, he did to the generation of the flood because they were uh, united. Um, as he did to the generation of the flood because they were united. This, to me, is the simple meaning of the verse in Bereshit 11.7. Behold, they are one nation with one language, 
for all of them and now. And so it says, since they are united, so it's everything planned to do will not be withheld from them because the actual strict justice is not able to have control of them. So it says, let us go down and confuse their language so that one man will not understand the language of his friend in order that controversy will emerge among them and there will be an opportunity uh, for the attribute of justice to dominate them. So here it is, we're learning already, this is a huge secret here, um, that when you're unified, it's, that's it. There's nothing that can come against you. When you're unified, there's nothing that can come against you. Um, but for whatever reason, we just don't, I don't, I don't know, we just, we, we're like knuckleheads. We just can't get this, you know, in our mind. We cannot grasp this con this concept. It's a very difficult concept. And, and mostly because it's an ego problem. We have problems with the ego. Um, you know, once, once people are personally offended over something, uh, they no longer can come together on an issue. And all of a sudden, uh, it becomes, you know, it, let's say, for example, you know, a few years ago, I was out in, um, in what they call these bench bar committees. And, you know, these things, it's totally ego driven, you know, and I told you about my time in legislature. I mean, this is all ego driven. And if you have an issue, and you, you, you know, you voting against the issue, but the other person doesn't see it. They see it like you voted against them. This became a personal thing. So now they stay quiet, right? A lot of times they stay quiet in your face, but they're plotting in their head. I'm telling you, the t final tally did not come down. They're already counting who voted against their them, because that's the way they see it. And they're already plotting revenge. So here we go. So this is what we're talking about, uh, this machloket that comes in. So it says, any group that wants to do something that will have a continuation and, per and preparation, and I'm sorry, uh, perpetuation must be wholly united. Then all the winds of the world will not be able to move them from their place. But if one person has an opinion and the other person has another opinion, and if each one desires that his opinion be first and not last, and he, sh and he says we are victorious, then they will be splintered into separate units. So it says only destruction will result and no success will ever come of it. So this is the big problem that we're talking about. You know, um, there's a reason why, you know, in, in the beginning when they were building the Mishkan, that, that uh, Shem used Akashia wood. And Akashia wood is known for its flexibility. Uh, if he had commanded that they made it with a wood that, that it was just so sturdy, it, it doesn't bend, then it, it would have snapped at any at any any strong wind, anything. If they would have dropped it, it would have snapped. And this is also a secret that Hashem is telling us. There's times that you have to bend. It cannot always be my way, my way, my way. You have to bend, especially for the sake of, of Shalom. You have to be able to, um, you know, hear the other person out, even if you don't fully agree, in order that you can come to some kind of resolution. But again, this seems to elude us, and I don't know why. So it states that they will go from bad to worse and they will come to ignite the flame of a fiery argument. And I'm sure everyone listening to this has certainly, uh, you don't even have to be in politics. Uh, this happens in the day to day. This is such a common issue. So it says it's evil consequences are sure to follow. Heaven save us. Our sages have al already made an analogous of this uh, and it's uh, to the bundle. And it says, even if it's a bundle of reeds, as long as they are tied together, even the strongest man will not be able to break them. But when they are separated, they are easy to break. And it is written in Hosea 10, uh, 2, their heart is separated from me. Now they will be destroyed. Uh, so this, uh, you know, they're using the example of reeds. But even if you ever cook pasta, you know, even the little pasta, you know, if you have it in a big bunch, it's very difficult to break it. But if you separate it one by one, it, it's no problem. That's a done deal. It's broken. So this is what happens. And sometimes uh, troublemakers are very good. Uh, it's like they took a page out of Sun Tzu and they know, you know, uh, the, if you cannot conquer the masses, then you divide them, right? If they know that they themselves can't push the agenda to the entire, and, and they're still without, the, in other words, they don't have the numbers for the vote, then what they do is they they divide the masses, and this is what this is what Harav is saying that once you pluck one out, then you can break them easily. 
you know, it's that age old saying that we have uh, is that there's strength in numbers. So this is this is a perfect example of it. So it says, if someone wants to accomplish something good in a city so that everyone will accept his idea, he should not talk to everyone together. Rather, he should uh, call each person individually and speak to him with good reason and understanding in order that they should hear, comprehend, um, and the words that will enter uh, and the words will enter into his ears. So this is also the vice versa. If you want something accomplished, he's also giving you the roadmap here. Uh, you have to go to person one by one and you know have this little heart to heart if you will um, and then at that point again you've broken them so this is kind of the opposite so it says afterwards they will be easily uh, they, they, they will easily be united and they will all agree with him because of their uh, unanimity if a person tries to crack the nuts that hurt in a bag altogether he will not succeed however one at a time he will crack all of them so nevertheless, he should not do this in order that they help him attain any evil purpose, nor should he be like a, a Korach, one who acts in this manner as uh, is called an instigator and inciter. Uh, so we've already, you know, brought up, uh, and, and by the way, if, if you, you know, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about uh, uh, unity and all this, and, you know, this is why a lot of times we're being, you know, if they see, a problem in the community with with a particular person if they're the common denominator if every time the rub is always hearing and this person is always one of the parties already you know have a you have a problem and and they usually try to move in very quick to stomp it out because uh it's it, it does it, it ignites a fire um but every little fire starts with an ember and an ember you can put out really quick but you have to put it out quick because if you don't it has the potential to destroy everything so it states that rather in the way of truth, he should guide them on the upright path. Uh, when this is uh, his intent, he should conduct himself accordingly in order that they accept his plan. So it says a great means to achieve unity is to fulfill what the Torah has uh, said in Shemot 23 two, you shall side with the many. So this is where we get that rule that we rule with the majority. Um, and there's very famous stories that even when Rabbeinam knew that the majority wasn't uh, correct, um, you know, they side with the majority for the sake of shalom. So as even if it appears clear in his eyes that they, were, they are wrong and that it's fitting for them to listen to him as he's saying a proper thing, he should still nullify his opinion before theirs. He says he should also assist them and not violate the position of his friends. This is in accord with the statement of Rabbi Yossi who said in Shabbat 118b, I never dishonored the opinion of my contemporaries. I know that I'm not a Kohen, but in, and my friends, uh, if my friends told me to ascend to the Dukhan for the priestly blessing, I would go up. So it says that he too must be willing to take up arms against those who side against the many. He should say to them in a pleasant voice, which they can understand, that it is proper to be accommodating even though they disagree. Sometimes it is necessary that the elders and the leaders accede to the opinion of the subordinates and nullify their own will before the, uh, before the others will. This is based on the need of the time. When they see that it is highly likely that there will be a breach of order according to the thinking of those subordinates who lack uh, true understanding. So I think the, uh, the sages, they must have uh, wrote, uh, I think it's Willie Nelson's uh, famous song, Know When to Hold Them and Know When to Fold Them. So, I mean, this takes a very uh, wise person to know what to do. And again, uh, you know, the greatest example we see of this is the, the matriarchs, especially... Uh, when they, you know, they knew when it was time to, to be silent and they knew how to get things done. Um, and they did it all. I mean, you never see these like huge arguments, uh, between, you know, uh, Sarah and Abraham or, you know, uh, uh, Yitzhak and Rivka. I mean, they had very big, uh, things on their, on their plate yet. You never see this machloket going through. Uh, so they, they really, uh, they knew the art of silence and, and how to get things done. But it continues on, it says, Our sages have already noted in Rosh Hashanah 25b, Fortune is a generation in which the leaders listen to the common folk. And it says that the common folk need to make a fortiori, reasoning that they should listen to the leaders. If there's a rabbi who is a halachic decisor, and there, um, and there are appointed leaders in the community who have been accepted as ar uh, arbiters, of the community affairs, it is proper that no one speak out against them, even if they say that the right is left. So it says, every astute individual must act with intelligence and stand on guard with great courage and strength in order to perpetuate unity. 
one should be forbearing, exert enormous effort, and do everything which is in his power to maintain unity and peace, because is it the existence and support of the foundation of every matter, and from every group is its gain. So again, like in closing, this is uh, something, it's a big, uh, it's a big issue. And sometimes I think, you know, um, a fight can go on forever if you let it. It will go on forever if you let it. And some people, uh, you know, they just want to be right. They want to be right. And sometimes I think what people forget is that your view is not the only right one. Um, there's wisdom in, in just, you know, keeping silent and listening to the other side, even if you don't agree with it. But you never know. You know, there's times... You know, sometimes you have to listen to another person because sometimes they come and if you listen with no um, expectation, you go with an open mind, they may be able to change your mind on something. Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. But at least you can say and you can look that person in the eye and say, I've, I've heard you. But vice versa, you know, that person should also be able to listen to your side. And perhaps they will change uh, their opinion. I mean, we don't know. But the thing is, I think that we're so ready to come in with a battle axe and just fight it out and, and to the death. I mean, we're like gladiators when it comes to this. And this is becoming to the detriment of Kla Yisrael. On, on, the, on the other side, again, you know, we quoted Sun Tzu and we'll do it again. You know, the other, the flip side of that is that Kla Yisrael stays... Uh, at the end, push come to shove, they always stay united because of the fact that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So at the end of the day, everyone in Klai understands, you know, if somebody comes against the Jewish nation, we do. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're uh, Haredi, if you're Orthodox, if you're, if you're Ashkenazi, if you're, you know, uh, Sephardim. It doesn't matter if you're a conservative. It doesn't matter what, where you're holding. All of a sudden, we, un we understand uh, the, you know, we got to come together, but I don't understand why it takes something like that for us to get unified. Why can't we just get unified before and then nothing can come against us? So, you know, with Hashem's help, we'll, we're going to get this under control. But again, change starts with yourself and we can't expect someone else to, to do something and, and, and we can't hold them to a level that we ourselves are not holding in. Um, so again, uh, everybody just needs to take a chill pill and just, uh, you know, and just uh, be kind to one another. Just listen. Um, but, you know, there are times where you have to get somebody who you know is wiser uh, or who has a experience in a certain situation to kind of come in. And sometimes you do. You need a mediator um, because, uh, you know, it can get to the point that sometimes that that's it. We, we've, we've crossed the Rubicon. We cannot go back. We cannot, you know, and sometimes you need somebody who has no skin in the game to kind of go and give you a fair opinion um, based upon the facts as they see them. But, uh, you know, until then, you know, we'll just all have to continue working on our midot. Um, but that's it for today. And I hope we'll all be together again soon. Besarat Hashem.